everybody. Welcome back to Viking MTG. Here for a little product review. Um, I'm trying to work out with Ultimate Guard. I've sent them a few emails. They've emailed me back about doing uh, product reviews for them. But I wanted a new deck box. I've really gotten tired of these. They break really easily. Um, they're just kind of blood. I don't like carrying them around. They don't feel good. I don't like the product. I just don't like it. So I found one of these. Um, they're a little on the high end, but um, I really like the small version, the single deck version. I really do like it. It's rock solid. It works really well. It's an awesome uh, deck box. But I want to check out one of these. And what a better way to check it out right out of the box than uh, with my subscribers. So, let's check out what we got. Alright. Got the yellow one. I don't know why I did, but it just did. Kind of like it. Let's see what we got inside. It's pretty nice. It's got a really nice feeling. It's tough. I mean, this thing is rock solid. This is not breaking. It's not going, I mean, I'm big. I'm big and I'm strong. And this thing isn't moving at all. I'm bending, I'm twisting, nothing. This is a rock solid uh, product. And the best part about it, a lot of these deck boxes and, and stuff, you can't fit decks in. Done. You can fit your decks right in. I bet my deck box will fit in here. Yep. Look at that. I can fit the Ultimate Guard, the small deck box in there. I can fit all my decks in there. Well, here we go. So all my main decks are in here. can even fit whatever extra cards I get while in there. Pow. This is a nice box. This is truly a very nice box. I recommend this product on Amazon, um, outside your LGS. Amazon and eBay, these run around 30. It's your LGS, you're going to pay the usual markup, 35 or so. Uh, so, make your decision on how you want to get it. I always like to support an LGS where I can. Uh, if I'm buying a couple boxes for the channel, I will more often than not go to Rudy. Because uh, I'm a patron of his, you can get a great deal from him. But if I'm, you know, Want to go in one box or you know a bundle or some or just some loose packs? I will go to my LGS. Uh, it's great to support local businesses. You really do need to support your community. And if local businesses go out, things start to die in a town. Believe me. So I hope everybody enjoyed this opening. Uh, everybody have a wonderful week. Uh, this uh, product opening, product review. I know it was quick. Uh, Actually, why not? Been preparing to do this. Let's uh, do a box of M19 since we did the uh, product review. Let's do this box of M19 I had sitting around. That's cracking. Might as well make this a video. Do the uh, product opening before the box and forces you guys to stick around and watch it. And again, you could just click. Two minutes, five minutes ahead. That's a, I really love that deck box. That thing's awesome. Very pleased with it. All right, let's crack it. See what we get. Never mind. Today. Hey, buddy. Welcome back, to Viking MTG, for uh, mail time. Episode. Got some mail from Mr. Bevers. It's my grab bag. And uh, this is a pretty good grab bag. So I'll go ahead and show you what I got. This was a pretty huge grab bag. If, you've, uh, if you're not a patron of Mr. Bevers and you've never done his grab bags, they're uh, hella worth it. Honestly, much like mine, you're usually going to get more than you put into it. I think maybe once or twice I've been. I've gotten six or seven dollars, like maybe five dollars worth of cards. 
90% uh, of the time I get more than my $8 uh, grab bag fee, whatever you want to call it. All right, so we got Hickma Sentinels, A Burning Vengeance, Arborback Stomper, Scroll of Grisseland, Make Mischief, Grace, uh, Grasp of Phantoms. We got a Quarantine Field Mythic from Battle for Zendikar. We got a Cabal Therapy Uncommon. I believe that, yeah, it's an uncommon worth a dollar or more from uh, Eternal Masters. Uh, and we have our, oh, we have our money card here. Uh, every month, there's a jackpot, essentially, selection of cards. I have ne had never won the jackpot selection of cards before. I'm just going to, I think, leave this in here. Uh, I had never won the jackpot before. But I did this month. Uh, he basically puts your, your name on a land card puts it in a pile, and if you're the last one, last grab bag to be selected, then you're entered for the grand prize. And that's what I won. A strip mine. It's a $110 card. It was pretty unbelievable. Strip mine expedition. So, I had a $110 card, and I paid a total of $8. I used to do the, uh, the, the, uh, fat pack level, but after I uh, started my own channel, it became a little uh, defeatist. You know, I need to use the funds for my own channel. Um, a Cataclysmic Gear Hulk also, and a foil captured by the consulate. So, definitely a good grab bag, without a doubt, <laughs> with a $110 strip mine in there. So, that was pretty unbelievable. Um, I will probably hold on to that. Uh, for a while. I may eventually sell it or uh, do something with it. I don't know. We'll see. Right now I'm holding on to it. Now I had started opening a box of course at 2019 and then something crazy happened and I had to stop. So I did not open any packs. I just took the plastic off. So let's see what we get here. Alright, we got a Gift of Paradise, a Sift, Reassembling Skeletons, and a Leonin War Leader. It's a good rare. Now, the price of the rares has come down, have come down. The only rares really worth anything. Leonin War Leader, Graveyard Marauder, and uh, Death Baron. Uh, the Mythics are what you're looking for. The Planeswalkers are the main money. Scape Shift and Bolas. Uh, scape Shift, Bolas, and the Planeswalkers. That's pretty much where you're going. We're going to do just the sauce here. Got a Goblin. Foul Richard. A Foil Field Creeper. That's our first foil. And a One with the Machine. And no... Our only money uh, uncommon is the, uh, I believe, the, the land. I can't remember the name of it. There's not much in this set other than a few rares and the mythics. Uh, double cast, sleep, volcanic dragon, and a death bear to speak of the devil. Within stream and a Thopter token. So Death Baron's good card. Uh, if you're gonna play zombies right now in the meta and standard, gotta have Death Baron. Have to. Turning all your zombies into Death Touchers, it's it's overwhelming. You get two Death Barons out. Everything gets plus two plus two, and the Death Barons have Death Touch as well. They're gonna let a lot of damage get through before they block with their Strong guys. Stitcher Supplier, Ether Tunnel, Surge Mare, and a Chaos Wand. Chaos Wand is hilarious and uh, limited. 
turning other people's, grabbing other people's cards and playing them against them. It's it's nasty, real nasty. Trust me, I know how to play it against me. We have a dragon token, forest, and a bane fire. A little slow start so far. So we'll pick up, I'm sure. I like getting my, uh, I have found, and I, if you look back on my videos, you'll notice, uh, the best boxes as far as value, I find you either get your car, your mythics right away, or at the very end. Those are the best boxes, generally. Uh, there's a Cleansing Nova. I see that card going up in value very soon. And right after the cycle, when Fumigate goes away, that card will be the next. It will be the replacement for Fumigate, but it's better than Fumigate because you have the option to destroy all artifacts and enchantments. It, it's better than Fumigate, it really is. Except it's not instant speed. We have an Arcane Encyclopedia, a Johnny's Pride Mate, Gravedigger, and a Mist Collar. And you know, it stinks that you can't d cast it at a instant speed, but that really, it's not that big a deal. You can still blow up all their stuff. Your turn. Not that big a deal. We got a dragon token, mountain, and a bone dragon mythic. Ew. Not the mythic we're going for. And we got a rupture spire in there. The rupture spire is worth squat, though. Right, we have a foil here. We've got a thopter token. Nicobolus the Ravager, and could there be a Bolus right in front of it? Loxodon Linebreaker. And a rare is Demanding Dragon. There's a card that's going to go up in value. Uh, if you're not aware, it will be the replacement for Glorybringer. When Glorybringer cycles, that will step right in. And we have a Sun Cleanser. Lackluster box thus far, unfortunately. But all it takes is a Planeswalker or two to pick us up. Darkon and uh, Tezzerin up there. Bolus, of course, can do a lot of damage for us. We have a Bat Token, Highland Lake, and a Runic Armasaur. Get rid of this. I've got a couple. Bone Dragon there. We gotta watch out for Vine Mares too. Vine Mares have got some value now. They're still going up in price. I think they'll be three or four dollars soon. They're in every mono green deck I see now. Not one mono green deck isn't playing that card. And it is a nightmare for mono red uh, for mono black. Amulet of Safekeeping. There isn't much of a way to get rid of it in Mono Black. There really isn't at all. Unless you block something with it. Which that's just a silly thing to do. We have a Rogue's Gloves. Reliquary Tower. That's still a buck or so, I think. An aerial engineer and a sigiled sword of Valoran. Good in uh, limited, not much good in standard. Actually, I've never even seen it played in standard. I find the knight deck, you know, a three drop, you, you're going to want to play a knight for your three drop. There's so many good three drop choices in the, in the knight deck, including History of Banalia. There's no reason to, to have a three drop sigiled sword. We have a Nightmare's Thirst, a Colossal Majesty, 
a draconic disciple, and a demon of catastrophes. I laced that into my mono black budget, mono black font monument deck, and he works very, very well, especially since most people are not expecting him. Just a moment, I need a drink of water. That's better. Alrighty. We got a goblin token. Swamp. And an Omni Sciences or Second Mythic. Let's hope we get four or five mythics, and a couple of them are good. Because our first two mythics are pretty cruddy. Omni Science is unplayable in standard. For the most part, I've seen somebody play it once or twice. They ain't needing 10 mana to play it, that's pretty rough. We have a Dragon Token. Cinder Barons. I'm going to keep the Dragon Token. I don't know how, but somehow I don't have very many of them. A Dismissive Pyromancer. I'm going to dismiss him. He is not very playable at all. I'd like him if he uh, could deal damage to target creature or player instead of just creature. Thopter, Mountain. I mean, I'd sack him to do four damage to somebody's face. But pure creature, I mean, it doesn't do you much good if you come up against uh, control. Can't hit the fairy with them. Can't hit the player with them. All you can do is swing. Cat token. Forest. Foil forest. We got our foil land. An escape shift. Good mythic. That's a good third mythic. Rudy, if you see this video, I got the RTR boxes. Thank you. It's awesome. Submerged Boneyard. And a Gore Claw. I love Gore Claw. She's awesome. I want to get a couple of her in foil. So Bevers pulled a foil of her. I was going to trade for them instead of buying them. Um, I didn't smile to you. Other than amazing discoveries here in town. Um. None of my other LGS has had them. Tranquil Expanse and a Psy, Master Thopters. So I might end up getting them at, uh, get a couple of them at Amazing Discoveries. I'm trying to foil out the decks that I'm building. Uh, foil out the, the new stuff. You know, because the, the decks I'm building, I plan on being dominant for a while. I'm concentrating on what's going to be big and bad in the next set. In the next, you know, after the cycle. We have a Johnny's Pride Mate foil. That's sweet. Go right in my cat deck. And a Detection Tower. Inferno Hellion, he's awesome. And you're going, what do you mean he's awesome? Well, look at him with Sarkhan's Unsealing. We have a Night Token, Meandering River, and a Dark Dweller Oracle. See people trying to lace that into Mono Red, the classic Mono Red. See people trying to lace that in, but I am, unfortunately, the reality is classic Mono Red, after the cycle, is going to be crushed. There's just way too much in that mono red deck that's in the sets that are cycling out. It's you're losing 70% of that deck easily. All you're gonna have is the Phoenixes, Demanding Dragon, a few things like that. Lightning Bolt or Lightning Strike. Isolate. And if only they'd uh, print Lightning Bolt again, that'd be awesome. Or uh, print it in standard. Bring Lightning Bolt back and That'd be ridiculous. 
it would change standard drastically. It would certainly make uh, mono red pretty much permanently bad. Bad ASS. I have a soldier. Planes. Open the graves. And you don't hear me cuss because when I, 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 you know, I got the mouth of a sailor at heart, but eventually I plan on monetizing. And when you monetize, they look way back. They look at all a lot of your content and they look for any complaints about language. They look for you know, a history of bad language and they will decide yay or nay. Nice, foil demon and catastrophes, but that is a pretty terrible value foil rare. So not the foil rare I wanted, but it's still nice. And a palladium moors is our fourth mythic. So it doesn't look like we're going to get a bolus in this. But I averaged, it's funny, in Dominaria I averaged two foil rares per booster box. And this I've only averaged one. The Havoc Devil's Foil. Finally getting our foils. And a Mentor of the Meek. I was so disappointed that Mentor of the Meek is the same art in this that it is in Instrad. How lazy is that? And come on, all the time between the sets and you can't come up with a different art. It's kind of ridiculous. Lazy, lazy, lazy. Or just saving money. Already own the art. Might as well use it again, I guess. We've got no duplication here. Unless you count the foil demon of catastrophes and the regular. Which I don't. Think. Oh, no foil. We have a thud. Fell Spectre. Mirror image. And a metamorphic alteration. Mountain and a beast token. It's gonna be a crazy couple weeks here with work, so I'm trying to I'll try and get the content in, I promise. I won't pop off the map. But I just gotta squeeze it in. I have plenty of vacation time, so I'll use a little of it here and there to, to film some videos for you guys and get some content up. Maybe try and squeeze in a live stream somewhere. We'll see. Bat token, swamp, and an Elvish clan caller. I think I got three weeks of vacation. Gotta use it or I'm gonna lose it. I've used one day here, one day there, but it's not enough to keep from losing it. All right. There's Lily on his contract. Not the best box value wise by any means. Um, Skate shift's the only redeeming card. Uh, other than that, not a lot in the uh, rare area other than Death Baron. Haven't even seen a uh, gra uh, graveyard marauder. A graveyard marshal, sorry. Psychic Corrosion, Leon and Vanguard, Cedar Enchanter, and a Magistrate Magistrate's Scepter. I think it's all going to be jank from here, so I'm going to speed through it. I don't see there being anything else of value left in this box. Elf Warrior, Stone Quarry, and an Alpine Moon. See that, that card taken off? I know it's already being sideboarded in modern decks. I see it taken off eventually. Emblem Mountain and a Thorn Lieutenant. Oh, 
You know, last time I was at that banana, trying to kind of a funny comment by somebody. Because I had taken and put a bunch of cards, a bunch of uh, commons and uncommons. There were probably a few rares laced in, but a ton of cards for free. You know, just take. And I had this gal walk up to me. I don't know what her name was. And uh, I met actually two women that night. One of them, really nice gal that was over with her son. She was picking over cards. Really nice. But then another one walked up to me and told me, I should be careful about giving stuff away for free because then people will start victimizing me. And I was stunned by the comment. It was so strange. Tranquil Expanse foil. That's cool. That's a cool foil. It was just a very strange comment to me. I'm like, I'm giving away something that essentially is worthless. And the other gal, she was really sweet, but she, I think maybe she had, just has subscribed to the channel, but she uh, asked me, are you going to donate them? And it's a good question. Um, as far as donating commons and uncommons and bulk rares, do not donate your cards to Goodwill. They will take the cards, put them on a website, and auction them off. They are not going to go to some kid. They're going to take your bulk and auction it and make cash off of it. And the problem with Goodwill, and I know because my sister had some serious issues. Oh, nice, Sarkon. Sweet. Fifth Mythic. I was wrong about not having anything left in this box. Um, my sister had some serious issues, and she ended up working for them. And... She said that really all the money goes, goes towards giving people a, a place to work. A lot of recovering drug addicts and ex-cons and stuff like that. And that's honorable. But your, your card, just remember, your cards are not going to some kid. Your cards are going to these big auctions and being auctioned off. You should just keep that in mind. And I'd much rather my cards go to people who want to play the game. And we have a Seder Enchanter. Very nice. I want my cards to go to people who are going to come play at the LGS. That's what I want. So I don't think that's a terrible idea. Sweet. So we had a Sarkon and a Scape Shift. Uh, Palladia is okay. I see all the dragons being very relevant when the cycle happens. They're going to take the place of a lot of the big bads in the sets. And Sarkon can cast. You're going to see Sarkon in any almost any deck that's playing Bolas. You're going to see Sarkon because he helps a lot playing Bolas. And once you've got him in there and you've got Bolas in there, you can lace in those Elder Dragons and start doing a lot of damage. So we did all right. We got a Marshal, a Thornton Lieutenant, Elvish Clan Caller, uh, Isolate, which has some value. It's it's useful. Uh, we had a Goreclaw, who I love. I love Goreclaw, Sugar Bear. She's awesome. We had a Demanding Dragon, Death Baron, Foil Demon and Catastrophes. Pretty terrible Foil Rare. But at the same time, I like Demon and Catastrophes as far as the card goes. So I'll take it as a win. Uh, but value-wise, it is not. That's a garbage fire. Uh, as Rudy would say, that is a garbage fire Foil Rare. Uh, but the Sarkon is not... The $20 Planeswalker, it is by no means a Teferi, but I did hit a Teferi in uh, my triple pack opening. Actually, yeah, no, it was one I opened on uh, live stream. That's right. I hit a Teferi when I did the live stream, uh, the post standard showdown live stream. Uh, so, hope everybody enjoyed this, uh, the product review and the opening of Corset 2019. Uh, I am going to wrap this up and handle some business and figure out what I'm going to do for dinner. Everybody has a great night. Talk to you later. Peace.